the gender inequality gender is a term everyone is aware of however its meaning is not easily understood our understanding of gender is often based on the family and the society that we live in this leads us to think that the roles men and women around us play are fixed and natural in fact these roles differ across communities around the world gender is a social construct and not determined by biological differences it is a term that helps us to understand many of the inequalities and power relations between men and women in the society role played by gender gender inequality refers to the obvious or hidden disparities among individuals based on the performance of gender this problem in simple terms is known as gender bias which in simple terms means the gender stratification or making difference between a girl and a boy in term of biasness among the gender india has 10th rank out of 128 countries all over the world which is really shameful for us but this problem is increasing although the government has banned the prenatal sex determination in india in the olden times this problem was mainly seen in the rural areas because many rural people think that the girl child is a burden on them the afflicted world in which we live is characterized by deeply unequal sharing of the burden of adversities between women and men however inequality between men and women can take many different forms indeed gender inequality is not one homogeneous phenomenon but a collection of disparate and interlinked problems The issue of gender inequality is one which has been publicly reverberating through society for decades. The problem of inequality in employment is one of the most pressing issues today. In order to examine this situation, one must try to get to the root of the problem and must understand the sociological factors that cause women to have a much more difficult time getting the same benefits, wages and job opportunities as their male counterparts the society in which we live has been shaped historically by males however in many parts of the world women receive less attention and healthcare than men do as a result of this gender bias the mortality rates of females often exceed those of males in these countries mortality inequality has been observed extensively in north africa and in asia including china and south asia gender inequality in india man and woman are both equal and play a vital role in the creation and development of their families in particular and the society in general in india since long back women were considered an oppressed section of the society and they were neglected for centuries during the national struggle for independence Gandhi ji gave a call for emancipation of women. He wrote, "I am uncompromising in the matter of women's rights. The difference in sex and physical form denotes no difference in status. Woman is the complement of man and not inferior." Thus, the first task in post-independent India was to provide a constitution to the people which would not make any distinctions on the basis of sex. It is really important to note that though the constitution of India has been in force for more than 60 years the raising of the status of women to one of equality freedom and dignity is still a question mark in India since independence a number of laws have been enacted in order to provide protection to women for instance the dowry prohibition act 1961 the equal remuneration act 1986 the hindu marriage act 1956 the hindu succession act 1956 the muslim women protection of rights on divorce act 1986 the commission of sati prevention act 1987 protection of the women from domestic violence act 2005 etc the sense of insecurity humiliation and helplessness often keep a woman silent our major socialization is such that for any unsuccessful marriage 
which results in violence or divorce, it is generally the woman who is held responsible. Cultural beliefs and traditions that discriminate against women may be officially discredited, but many of them continue to flourish at the grassroots levels. Family relations in India are governed by personal laws. The four major religious communities, Hindu, Muslim, Christian and Parsi, have their separate personal laws. They are governed by their respective personal laws in matters of marriage, divorce, succession, adoption, guardianship and maintenance. In the laws of all the communities, women have fewer rights than men in corresponding situations. It is unfortunate that women of the minority communities in India continue to have unequal legal rights and incomplete formal equality in all aspects of family life. This is basically the problem of gender inequality. Different types of gender inequality There are seven types of gender inequality. Mortality inequality In some regions of the world, inequality between women and men directly involves matters of life and death and takes the brutal form of unusually high mortality rates of women and a consequent preponderance of men in the total population. Natality inequality There was a time when this could be no more than a wish, but with the availability of modern techniques to determine the gender of the fetus, sex-selective abortion has become common in many countries. Basic facility inequality Even when demographic characteristics do not show much or any anti-female bias, there are other ways in which women can have less than a square deal. Professional inequality In terms of employment, as well as promotion in work and occupation, women often face greater hardships than men. A country like Japan may be quite egalitarian in matters of demography or basic facilities and even to a great extent in higher education and yet progress to elevated levels of employment and occupation seems to be much more problematic for women than for men. Special Opportunity Inequality Even when there is relatively little difference in basic facilities, including schooling, the opportunities of higher education is far fewer for young women than for young men. Earlier, it was considered useless to educate them as they were neither required to seek employment nor to study scriptures. Ownership Inequality In many societies, the ownership of property can also be very unequal. Even basic assets, such as homes and land, may be very unequally shared. The absence of claims to property not only reduces the voice of women, but also makes it harder for women to survive in many cases. Old or family inequality In many countries, the family itself becomes the root cause for greater inequality. Not only are boys preferred to girls, but also differential treatment is given to them. Best food will be served to boys as compared to girls. While boys are left free to play, girls are made to do household chores and stay at home. Factors responsible for gender inequality Low status of women in society In India, the status of women began to deteriorate from ancient time. Women were economically dependent on men and were denied share in parents' and husbands' property. They were considered inferior to men. Discrimination against girl-child In many families, preference is given to a boy rather than a girl because it is said that continuity of a family depends upon the boy and not on the girl. She is considered as a liability in a family because parents have to spend money on her from her birth to death especially at the time of a marriage. Age-old systems against women In Indian society, girls were married at a very young age. In case of early death of her husband, she had to suffer long life of agony as a child widow. Widows were not permitted to remarry. They had to lead a life of utter neglect and despise. The custom of sati was regarded as the noblest virtue of a widow. Many a time, 
widows were forced to become sati against their wishes. The dowry system, still prevalent in the society, forced many poor girls to remain unmarried. Neglect of female education In India, it was considered useless to educate girls as they were not required to seek employment. Equal opportunities are not provided to women. Women in villages spend a large part of their day doing household chores. The school dropout rates are higher among women. The choice of subjects, taught in school and values given reinforce traditional roles of women. Sufficient encouragement is not given to girls in the field of sports and education. Government Initiatives for Women Empowerment A clear vision is needed to remove the obstacles in the path of women's emancipation from both the government and women themselves. Efforts should be directed towards all-round development of all Indian women by giving them their due share. Women empowerment is the ability of women to exercise full control over their actions. In the past, women were treated as mere housemakers. They were expected to be bound to the house, while men went out and worked. This division of labour was and still persists in few parts of the country. This is one of the major reasons of which certain evils such as child marriage, female infanticide, women trafficking, etc. took birth in our society. The government has passed many laws so as to empower the women. These rules have empowered them socially, economically, legally and politically. The state empowerment policy for women aims at objectives which are gender equality, gender justice, social security, elimination of discrimination against women in all walks of life, economic development and integration of women into the mainstream economy. As a token of state's commitment to remove all barriers in the way of women's participation in the mainstream development, the state government declared 1997 as the year of gender equality with social justice. Steps have been taken to provide specific provisions for women towards equality in political, social, economic and cultural fields. The government has been playing a conscious role in empowering women by striving to enforce the reservation of 33% for women in government and public sector with carry-forward policy. The 33% of budget of all departments for developmental programs for women, implementation of girl-child protection scheme to encourage girls to get married only after the age of 18 years, which is the prescribed statutory limit, to encourage enrollment of the girl-child in school and to ensure her education at least up to the intermediate level. Eliminate negative cultural attitudes and practices against women. To eliminate prejudice against the girl-child through direct investment from the government. Opportunities to participate through mothers' committees and IGA groups. The year 2001 was celebrated as Year of Women Empowerment and the year 2003 as the Year of Adolescent Girls. Women were given equal political rights through universal adult franchise. Women were given equal share in the property of their parents. The Hindu Bill and the Kamala Act were passed to do away with the disparities. The government has declared dowry as illegal. Persons demanding or giving dowry are liable to be prosecuted. As a result of the above efforts, much improvement has been achieved in the status of women in the society. Many of them now adorn high offices in various fields, including politics. Not only the government, but various non-governmental organizations have also done a lot to improve the status of women in our society. Child marriages have also been stopped. A study by the Centre for Economic and Social Studies in Hyderabad found that child marriage has declined among project participants. Groups have also started campaigns against the trafficking of women 
and girl children with the support of police the revenue administration and ngos in a bid to reduce child labor new residential schools have been set up in many districts to provide quality education to girl child laborers the jogini system in andhra pradesh is another social evil that requires to be eliminated in this system women are forced to leave their houses and follow the temple concubine system in recent years many steps have been taken so as to increase the participation of women in the political system the women's reservation policy bill is however a very sad story as it is repeatedly being scuttled in the parliament further there is the panchayati raj system where women have been given representation as a sign of political empowerment there are many elected women representatives at the village council level however their power is restricted as the men wield more authority all this shows that the process of gender equality and women's empowerment still has a long way to go empowerment would become more relevant when women are actually treated as equal to men this division of labor that women are supposed to do only household chores and the men are the only ones who can earn a living for the family has to be removed further women should be better educated better informed only then can they take rational decisions it is also necessary to sensitize the other sex towards women it is important to usher changes in the societal attitudes and perceptions with regard to the role of women in different spheres of life adjustments have to be made in traditional gender specific performance of tasks meanwhile a woman needs to be physically healthier in order to work equally this is sadly lacking in a majority of women especially in the rural areas they have unequal access to basic health resources and lack adequate counseling the result is an increasing risk of unwanted and early pregnancies hiv infection and other sexually transmitted diseases there is no doubt that the status of women has improved a lot evil practices such as the parda system child marriage etc have not been completely eradicated but have seen a downfall thus a clear vision is needed to remove the obstacles to the path of women's emancipation from both the government and women themselves efforts should be directed towards all round development of each and every section of indian women by giving them their due share